Hello and welcome to second lesson of our Data First Google Ads Optimization course. In this video, we will check the standard Google Analytics 4 reports in GA4, which means we will learn how to analyze the Google Ads performance using Google Analytics 4. Let's get started immediately. I will firstly be using GA4's demo account, and here on the left hand side, there is reports. Of course, you can do the same within your account. Under the reports, you have acquisition and then acquisition overview. Once you do this, on the right hand side, you will have some view Google Ads campaigns links. If you don't see that, that means your Google Ads with the GA4 is not linked or has recently been linked. So if you didn't link it, check our previous video in which I walk you through about this. And if you recently did that, you just need to wait a couple of days for the data to appear here. So in case you are seeing this view Google Ads campaigns here, just click into that. That will bring us into this beautiful report. We have a graphic here and then bar chart and obviously the table which we are more interested in. This is classic campaign level reporting. Here is the campaign name, users, sessions, engage sessions, clicks, cost, and more importantly, return on ad spend as a percentage. Obviously this is Google's demo account, so the data numbers doesn't make so much sense here, but I'm sure in your own account, it will be more practical. You might say, why do we need this? We already have the Google ads, right? To, re to report us the return on ad spend. There are a couple of reasons for that. One is obviously GA4 offers more in-depth reports. Google Ads cannot offer you some reports that GA4 can offer. Obviously, the standard report looks very similar, but other reports you will see in the following sections of the video or of the lessons. And more importantly, uh, Google Ads and GA4 has different attribution models. So you will see different numbers. This is another source of truth for you. You can check Google Ads and then you can check here and you can compare both. So that's pretty useful. Uh, here you can simply see campaign, you can change it to ad group, keyword, text, query, etc. And this report will remain same. And here you can change the events. Obviously, uh, now it shows all the events, but you can come here, you can say, I want to show the purchase events. It will show the purchase events. Or you can say, I want to see checkout. Maybe you, have, you are selling some expensive products and the purchase is not enough of a number for you to judge the ad's performances. Then you can check begin checkout, add to cart, you can compare other events. Of course, for these events to be visible here, your GA4 e-commerce tracking should be set perfectly fine. And if you are not sure about it, I have another long video series about Shopify GA4 course. That is valid even non-Shopify merch, non-Shopify people. So if you are even not using Shopify, you can still troubleshoot your existing GA4 integration using my video, otherwise these reports might not be working properly for you. So this is the standard report, right? So we are in the acquisition overview and then we have a table. Now I will jump into another account and I will simply add some metrics here because standard reports are editable, right? So this is very standard. You want to see a little bit more than what you see here. Then let's just go into that second account I mentioned. Here, I will simply click here, customize report. In your own account, you will see this customize report option. In Google Ads demo account, obviously you will not see that. So let's click customize report. I want to add some metrics. Metrics, and let's add, I mean, you can add any metric you want, but I like some average revenue per paying user. I want to add one more, but now there are too many metrics here. We need to delete some so that we make space. Let's say average revenue per user. Let's delete one more. Maybe we delete uh, cost per click. And then first time purchasers. By doing this, now we will see three more important metrics about these campaigns. As you can see here on this table, the last three metrics are the ones that I recently added. If you want, you could also move them at the top. Let's do that just for fun. If I apply, this report now will change. And as you can see here, first time purchasers. Let's also put conversions so that we compare first time purchasers and normal purchasers. So you can see here, there were 161 purchase, but 159 is first time purchase. What is ARPPU? Average revenue per paying user. Very good metric. You can read the more details here. 
an ARPU average revenue per user. So simply what this does is it shows us the average revenue from the users who purchased your product. And this shows us the average revenue from all of your users. So now, of course, in this example, there are only four campaigns and I have to hide these details. So probably you are not seeing anything on the screen now, campaign names and so on. But within your own campaigns, these metrics can do a good amount of job for you to show something that you haven't seen before. Maybe you have some really profitable campaigns in which average revenue per paying user is really high, then you could uh, invest more in those campaigns or some campaigns which brings you more first time purchasers. Of course, standard reports are limited. In the end, we are just using a standard report now, but this is a good place to start to analyze your Google Ads campaigns um, using GA4 standard reports. But this is definitely a good place. Start to analyze your Google Ads campaigns within GA4 to get used to it. So this was the first one. Now I would like to quickly mention about our course in case you are seeing this video for the first time. This is the first section analyze of our data first Google Ads optimization course. Um, this course has six videos and you are now in the second one. I strongly recommend you to complete it. Uh, I believe that will be helpful. And soon we will also release our optimize and create sections. Not to miss the updates, you can simply sign up for this course on our website. Uh, and then we will email you once we release more episodes or once we update the course, because we also update the courses quite often. So thank you so much for watching. I hope it was helpful and see you in the next video.